BMW 3 Series. This marks our first ever video on this generation of BMW. Now don't get me wrong, this looks identical to the 5 Series, and BMW has done that by design. They are attempting to unify their user experience across their entire product portfolio. And that philosophy of exterior design also carries over to the interior cabin. This feels near identical to the 5 Series, and to someone like Mark, that detracts from the specialness of a BMW product, but in my mind, I appreciate the attention to consistency. Everything that works great in that car works great in this car, so that means the cabin itself is great. So before I talk about the practicality, let's talk about the infotainment system. On the infotainment front, you have BMW iDrive, which is a matured system. It may be old at this point, but because they have the necessary cycles of learning, they've got to the point where everything works extraordinarily well. Wireless Apple CarPlay is easy to connect to. You have Android Auto, the native Bluetooth audio system, and navigation system all work great. Like in the 5 Series, you have a lot of baked in, basically, gimmicks that you're never going to use, but its core functions still work great. The audio controls and HVAC controls are physical, which is tremendous. I always appreciate when automakers do that. And the gauge cluster itself is sadly digital. While it looks great and it's configurable, the black levels are good and it's fast to respond, I do think in a car that you're going to keep for a while, it may not be the best option. I really do miss the older physical gauge cluster. On the ergonomics and comfort side of the equation, this is kind of what you're expecting. Most cars of this era are getting big. This feels as large as a 5 Series from yesteryear, which means it's large enough for four full-size adults. I, as a six-foot driver, can fit behind myself, which is not something I could say five or six years ago in a car in this class. The seats themselves, at least for the drivers with this M Sport package, are tremendous. They're the right level of adjustability and aggressiveness in bolsters. They don't make the softest seat in this segment, but they tend not to break down on long drives. The trunk is large, the rear seats fold down, and honestly, this is exactly what you want from an executive level sedan. So with that said, let's head to the shop and get this thing on the lift. So Mark, we're underneath the G20 Generation 3 Series. This is the first time we've done a video on this platform, and I will tell you this, we're doing an upcoming M3 video which that car is interesting looking, and we will go through all of the generational changes from this to the F80, the prior generation 3 Series. So let's talk about what's unique about the car we have here. This is a 330E, which means it has some electrification. Yes, and it's the same as the X3E that we also looked at. They're identical. Yeah. They both contain an electrical energy storage system that contains now a larger battery pack, a 12 kilowatt hour pack, up from around eight or so and it has 10.7 usable kilowatt hours so there's a little bit of overhead in the pack for degradation and all of that so that is good enough for how many miles 39 miles of range which okay. limits the use usability of this in somewhere like the midwest where you're probably going to be driving longer distances however if you live in a city where you're not commuting a long distance this theoretically should save you money or at least make the driving experience more pleasurable. What you have here is a four-cylinder turbocharged uh, gasoline engine, which makes about 181 horsepower. And they pair that to the electric generators or electric motors, which have two output modes. You have a base output that it always makes of an additional 68 horsepower. Like a hybrid mode. Yes. And then when you want to have a little bit extra gusto, you can go into extreme performance mode, something that involves with an extra boost is what okay, it's called. Yeah. And you can get a peak of 113 horsepower out of the electric motor combined to the 180 horsepower that you normally have. So it gives you basically like a 40 horsepower boost when you're in that. Over the, uh, the regular the setup, mode. yeah. Okay, so but if your battery is depleted out of that, that range, then you're stuck in hybrid mode and you're not Which makes about that. combined power of 250 horsepower. What you do get, is phenomenal fuel economy. Again, I don't drive the most conservatively, and I was getting in the high 20s, low 30s, which for a full-size premium sedan is pretty impressive. This is on Klar. This is the G20 architecture, much like you got before, and very quickly, like you're expecting it of modern sedans. It's wider, it's more rigid than the prior generation, and it's longer. This thing is a big car now. This 3 Series is bigger or as big as the E60 Generation 5 Series in usable space. And the new 5 Series, which we've done a video on, is even larger. But 
this still maintains some of the more budget-friendly things like strut front suspension. You ditch the multi-link. It is all aluminum, including the front subframe, and then you have a multi-link in the rear. This does not come in all-wheel drive, though, does it? The one we have does not does not have all-wheel drive. E. The E can get all-wheel drive oh, okay. as well. This platform, the lower trim levels, get rear-wheel drive, open diff, and then you can go to X-Drive, which is an all-wheel drive system, which is rear-drive biased. And this still uses the ZF8 speed. Yes, and it is a very, very good gearbox. So with that, Mark, let's take this out on the road. All right, sounds good. So, Mark, the G20 Generation 3 Series. As I mentioned in the shop, this is a 330E. Let me take off and show you what electric power does. It's totally adequate. And that's where, that's the angle I think I'm gonna approach this car uh, with. The fact that this vehicle, yes, it's expensive as we mentioned in the shop, and like we mentioned before, there isn't a lot of value in a luxury product, but this does everything so well, you forget that you're driving a car essentially. It just, it takes care of everything. That's exactly what you want in a luxury product. It rides properly. The drivetrain is pretty decent. I wouldn't get the, the e ver this E variant in the Midwest because the range is so little that it's basically useless. And the distance it takes me to go to your house, from my place, and to our office, I've killed all the electric driving range. So uh, maybe if you're in a city, it's fine, but the G20 at its core is a very, very competent product to the point where it's almost boring. Now, we have this argument quite a bit this you really were talking about the e-variant of this car and we know hybrids and plug-in hybrids are trans transitional products into mm -hmm. full evs uh, until they can get mainstream and you can get the supply chain up to make sure that there's enough of them on the road so why would you choose this obviously you're saying you wouldn't even consider this but why would somebody consider it if you're only driving 20 miles in a day this makes a lot of sense when we had the x3e in that product, if you live in the city, you know, you're a man or woman who isn't really driving that much, really just to and from the store, it makes sense for someone like that. Not someone who puts a ton of miles on their vehicle or, you know, has range anxiety issues. But because this is still a three series, when you drive it, it does have really good driving dynamics like that. Getting out of some of the cars we've been in recently, the Accord Hybrid and the Sonata N, made me appreciate how good modern BMWs are. There aren't any shortcomings with this product other than its price. It just does everything so well in the rear wheel drive architecture. You know, I've given up on BMW regular three series and being fun. Yeah. We had this conversation. They aren't that fun, but because it's a rear drive architecture, when the weather is a bit iffy or anything like that, you can get this thing to go sideways and explore the limits of a rear wheel drive architecture that you can't do in an Accord or Camry or even a TLX. I, yeah, I, I, I agree with you and I don't. The rear wheel drive aspect is huge if you like to drive. Having the, the weight distribution, the balance and all the money that they put into, into this car and then to me, when I when you talk about fifty to sixty thousand dollars for a three series, and then you add the hybridization and the plug-in stuff, and then I get in here, I'm like this isn't really doing anything much better than the thirty thousand dollar competitors. It really isn't. It looks just as cardboard and basic as most of the economy cars. And to be fair to BMW, a lot of these companies have gotten much better at interior design, exterior design. They've caught up to this what what they're trying to do here. And I just feel like there's not a whole lot here for me other than the under the underpinning, some of the drivetrain stuff. Because I could take it or leave it pretty much in this. There's no value in luxury goods. We talk about that all the time. It's like buying a suit off the rack, right? Is a, a Brooks Brothers suit you know, 20% better than like a men's warehouse suit or 30% better, even if it's, say it's double the price. I haven't bought a suit in a long time. Um, no, probably not. But if you want the extra, you know, X factor of having a premium badge and the greater attention to detail that is five to ten percent better everywhere throughout this car, then maybe this is worth it to you. Well scrap scrap the three series, five series BMW debate. 
what is the plug-in hybrid really bringing you? Is it bringing you better fuel economy? I mean, obviously you're getting this because you want to go pure EV for a short distance. When you're in hybrid mode, are you actually getting better fuel economy? Yeah, I'm getting 28 miles a gallon. And again, you and I drive like crazy assholes. And so what could you get in the 30s? Yeah, probably. Okay. Which, and there's no real acceleration negative. This drivetrain, like we talk about in every single BMW, is one of the, in this case, one of the best four cylinders money can buy and the eight-speed automatic gearbox in this works tremendously well. And again, if you don't want the hybridization, get a regular 330, yeah, or get a 340 if you want the B58, which is one of the best six-cylinder engines in a mainstream product currently available. So I will say from the hybridization of this car, compared to the regular four-cylinder that we were in, there is a lot more torque generated here. The acceleration off the line is really good mm -hmm. it, it actually does propel this it makes it feel way less four cylindery you don't have the gap at the start from like turbo lag you get that instantaneous thrust and then it winds out really cleanly all the way so it almost feels like they're six cylinder cars but you just you have to plug your ears it, otherwise it would it, yeah, would it sounds really like feel a sewing like machine yeah unfortunately but unlike a lot of the non-premium brands as well this turbocharged four cylinder makes consistent power. Yeah. Yes, you have to deal with the EV part of it, and when it's at zero range like it is right now, it does feel a little bit slower, but the actual tuning of the engine is perfect. It always feels like it's delivering the horsepower that it's advertising. All right, let's get into the final thoughts, Jack, where you can kind of sum up the whole experience of the 330E. All right, sounds good. Final thoughts on the BMW 333 and of course the X3e, which we didn't really put a lot of that in the video, but we did drive them both. And the reason I combine them is they're almost identical. One's kind of that small CUV, one's the tried and true sedan. With the new three series and the new platform or the, the update that it's done, there is more connectedness a little bit in terms of drivability. And I think, you know, we talked about this in the drive and Jack goes on this a, a lot. It's like there is a huge difference between kind of that those forty thousand, thirty thousand dollar sedans that are out there, like the Camrys, the Accords, even like the TLX. You know, they may have good platforms, but the reason you're paying a lot more for some of the BMW products, and yes, you're paying a lot for the badge, don't get me wrong. But when you start with an architecture that was designed to have a weight balance of a split of 50-50, rear wheel drive first, when you get behind the wheel and you forget everything else there's no comparison in the way that it drives from the cheaper competition. It just drives great. And that's one of the main reasons you're spending so much money. Now you're adding hybridization, a four cylinder, you know, you're kind of stripping out some of the things that you think from a BMW that you would want. So if you're somebody that wants that, the boost that you get with the electric motor and the battery pack is a huge advantage to adding it to a four cylinder. No, it does not sound good, but it feels, it feels very fast, at least in this car. You still have the rear wheel drive in ish. You can, you can get the thing to go sideways a bit. And so there's still that fun to drive, that balanced element. And then it has a sense of the car just feels solid. It really does. Now you're paying a lot of money for that privilege and you're paying a lot of money for essentially like a 30 mile EV range. So I don't know, you know, does it make sense? I guess if you want that EV part of it, yes, it does. And you do get better fuel efficiency. So if you want that BMW that moves more towards the efficiency part, well, they've done it here. I just wish it had more of a range. We'll cover the newer BMWs, including the M products, in more detail in terms of engineering. But I appreciate you watching. See you next time. Hi, I am Skyler, the official Savage Geese chatbot. Would you like to support them? Patreon is a great way, funds will be used for hair plugs or enlargement procedures. Additionally, feel free to head over to savagegeese.com and click SG Merch. Chicago Auto Pros is handling the best in class ordering and shipping. Part of the proceeds will be donated to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention.